Oh no, we got an oil slick. Why? Because we got a hole in a bashed oil pan. <laughs> Ugh. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H. And I'm laying on the ground. And welcome to the project. <laughs> Man, the plane's coming. I just ruined that spontaneous intro. I am laying on the ground um, because I got an oil leak under old Project Resurrect J here. Uh, this oil leak was caused by damage from the axle hitting the oil pan during the accident. We had tried to fix it with JB Weld and it lasted for a while, but uh, as you can see, it didn't hold up. So we are lifting. What am I doing? Still on the ground. <laughs> we are lifting uh, the old Resurrect J here. So while the axle is dropped for the lift, we're going to get at that oil pan. We're going to do an oil pan, a rear main seal, an oil pump, and of course, the new oil pan gasket. So we got our back wheels blocked. We got our parking brake on. We got the Jeep jacked way up. We got the wheels off, out of the way. And what we're going to do now is drain that oil. Then we'll get all up in that oil pan. So I invented a new method of saving your oil. I got myself a five gallon bucket with a nice thick three mil drum liner or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is a 16 millimeter. Well, I can't, oh, there we go. <laughs> Let's get this bucket of yuck out of here. I'm going to further lower this axle out of the way. Let this baby hang. All right, guys, we got this front end drop down nice and low. If you want to see how I did that, feel free to check out my XJ lift video. So now we got pretty good access to this oil pan. This has to come down next. We got a uh, hundred little bolts going all around. They're different sizes, some have brackets. So what we're gonna do is draw a nice little map on a piece of cardboard and stick these suckers in so we know exactly which way they go. Would you look at this beautiful map prepared for by my father. And yes, it is to scale. We are under the Jeep. Here is the oil pan. And we're gonna attack this baby by removing these bolts first in the front. These are 11 millimeter, maybe a 7 16 will work also, but I'm just gonna do these four right here. These right here go into your crankshaft cover, so it is made of aluminum and you don't wanna strip those, so I'm gonna take these out carefully and put them in my map. And yes, these are all the same. All right, I used the 11 millimeter to take off these front four. It's probably 7 16 This means that these right here are gonna be one half inch. So we got the bigger ones on the corners. Just gotta move these trans lines out of the way. And uh, yeah, we'll do half inch for these. This comes off nice. And I'll put this in the map in the appropriate spot. There we go. This one is a half inch head. It is 5 16 by 19 threads and it is three quarter inch long right there. And just so you know, guys, I mean, we did a, a tracing of this. So obviously the passenger side is flip flop with the driver's side, just so you know. But I think the shapes should do it justice because this is a pretty spot on map. Moving right along, just wanted to show you this uh, annoying clearance issues with these cats. These cats suck. That's the worst part about the 2000 and 2001 XJs. I want you guys to see that it's possible to work a 11 millimeter up in here. Come on, baby. Obviously, this one's a pain. This one's a pain too right here. And there's one more, but you'll get it. Ha, got it. All right, guys. I got all the bolts out. Just want to show you what you're going to be dealing with. This is the last two bolts by the rear main seal. Those half inch bolts, one there, one there. Uh, the passenger side is a cakewalk. Driver side, well, you're dealing with a lot of clearance issues with the old this downpipe over here. This, uh, this sucks. If you're patient, I did everything with some extensions. I got a universal in there. 
and uh, that 11 millimeter. Again, the passenger side cakewalk. So now that I'm looking at it with you, I'm realizing that the starter is probably in the way because if we zoom out, I don't think that flange is gonna come down next to this exhaust and the starter. So I'll go ahead and squeeze that starter out of here. And the starter is out. Woohoo! Don't drop it on your face. Everything should be free. I'm gonna try to break the seal. I'm gonna wedge a little screwdriver in here. Kinda gently wiggle it. If you're reusing your oil pan, I suggest you be very careful not to bend this flange. I uh, have a new oil pan. But I might be a little rougher than I normally would be. You got it. Wiggle it around the trans lines. I do believe it's caught on the wide girthy cats. These trans lines up and around first. All right. So I just worked this drag link steering bar loose. Eh. So I got the castle nut off. Gave it a couple of whacks with the hammer. It fell down nice and free and hopefully you know what? I'll put the castle nut back on so I don't lose it. Hopefully this will give me the clearance I need to get this thing out. Because man, it does not want to come down. <laughs> See? <laughs> this is definitely a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> My arms are tired. <laughs> So what I want to do is keep pulling the oil pan out the front because they dropped the steering bars and I got plenty of room now. The only problem is the uh, oil pickup is coming down into the deep part of the oil pan. So to clear this out of the sump, I'm going to unbolt this 13 millimeter. But I'm just going to take off the oil pickup. There we go. Too long. There we go. She's out. Now the pen should come out. Oh, oh you're so close. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Ho ho ho. There she is, guys. Got the oil pan out. Ooh, that is a nice girdle. <laughs> here we go. Old oil pan is finally out. This thing took a nasty hit. Tried to fix it. Uh, it just wouldn't work. Yeah, check this out. Let me shine the light from the inside. There you go. You can see that whole crease. It's just ripped right open. Again, tried to fix it, but nothing much you could do about that. I guess you could weld this closed now, but uh, I'm not gonna go through all that trouble taking out this oil pan just to put in a, a welded one. I'm gonna go ahead and put in this one. This is a factory XJ oil pan, and it's nice and clean, and it's gonna do just fine. So this is going to the scrapper, we have a new oil pickup and a new oil pump. Uh, we're gonna save this screw. Yeah, old versus new. And come on over here, check out our map. This is some weird strap that goes between the rear main seal bolts in the back. And once again, that's the front. Everything's on the flip side because we trace the oil pan. All these X's right here, these are studs. They're basically useless. They're in the way of the exhaust and all that stuff. So I put an X on them. <laughs> I'm not not using bolts. I have an extra set. So I'm gonna just take regular ones like these, short ones that aren't studs. So I'm gonna just put those in instead. So everything's marked out. Again, we got half inch heads on 5 by 19 threads. Those are in the corners. We're gonna use those to uh, 
to hold up the oil pan in place while we get everything centered. They have like pins for it. You'll see that in a minute. Of course, the rest of them, they're 7 16 hex heads. They're a quarter 20 and they're about one inch long. So that's it, guys. Uh, we're going to wrap it up for tonight. We'll finish tomorrow. All right, here we go, guys. Got the oil pan out. Actually took out the whole front end. Now I have excellent access to this whole under part of the Jeep. So what I'm going to do next is take off all of these little nuts here. These are my girdle nuts, and uh, they're 15 millimeter. Then I'm going to go ahead and drop this girdle. Gonna take off this oil pump now. I already took off one bolt right up here that holds on the oil pickup, and this other little one holds on the other side of it. So we're gonna go ahead, take that off. That's 13 millimeter. Also, drop off this oil pump and get ready for the new one. Oh, yeah, she's gonna drip on you. <laughs> now I'm oily. All right, girdle is out. Pump is out. Check it out up here. This is cool stuff, guys. There's a camshaft in here. Here is all our main journal caps right here. We have our connecting rods. These caps right here. We got the pistons way up in there. And uh, we're looking at one pretty sweet crankshaft. Uh, now, got a three quarter inch on a nice half inch drive. And we can just give this guy a little rotate. Make sure everything spins nice and free. This is pretty sweet. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna keep spinning until I get number one piston. I'm gonna get this all the way in a down position and then I'll have access to, uh, to get to this cap. I'll take off the cap. We're gonna slide the connecting rod and the piston up and then I'm going to gently uh, remove the bearings and put new bearings in. There we go. This should be good. Got it down and over so I can push this up, over, down, put new bearings in, put the cap on, uh, tighten it up, and move on to the next one in an ideal scenario. Let's see if I can make that happen. Just gonna mark this side. This is how I'll know it's the driver's side. Want to make sure they're installed the right way. Alright, this should be 13 millimeter. Of course, we're gonna do them one at a time so I don't have to worry about mixing these up. It's not very hard to remove. Gotta do a little bit on each side. I think the torque specs is only like 35, 30, 33, 35, something like that. Foot pounds. I'll have to look that up when it's time. Probably gonna need to, yeah, get a little tappy tappy. There we go. Yeah, some some light scoring, as to be expected. We got uh, many thousands of miles on this vehicle. All right, can you see that, guys? We got the connecting rod up there. The bearing stayed put. We'll go ahead and take this off. See how bad this is. Not terrible, but you can see those grooves in there. That's a good wear. It's not down to the uh, copper color yet. I've seen that. Here is the other half. Now, this goes into a little notch right here. You can see that little notch. The other side has a little, little groove in there. It's for oil. And it just kind of sits like this, right around the crankshaft. We're gonna go ahead and replace these with this. We got a whole new set of connecting rod bearings. This is a Clevite, Molly Clevite. I don't know how to say it. Uh, ooh, my manual. Also going to use fresh claws to wipe it down. Gloves because we don't want to get our grubby little fingers on them. And of course, some engine assembly lube. All right. Take out our old one. Gonna wipe everything down. Gonna hit this with a little brake clean. 
wiping this down you don't want to oil this because you don't want the bearings to spin so now we're going to take our new bearings and as you can see there's no more oil notch i think in 2003 engineers decided that the oiling notch was no longer necessary and it will not affect the part i don't know go figure well that clips in nice now i'm gonna pull this piston down gently don't want the threads of the connecting rod to scratch against that crank hit with a little brake clean fresh cloth Wipe that down, and I'm gonna clip in my new Clevite bearing. There she is, looking good. That's it. All right, push the piston back up so we can get some clearance in here. I wanna wipe down my crank. Well, this surface looks gorgeous. And now the assembly lube. Pulling down the connecting rod right onto the crankshaft. Make sure everything lines up just right. All right, more assembly lube on the cap. And line up our notch where we marked it. Make sure they're all facing the right direction. Pop it back on. Our nuts could go on. And we're gonna hand tighten these just snug so they make contact. We're gonna torque them later. Alright, now we're gonna rotate our crankshaft again and we'll do number two. Alright, all new six connecting rod bearings are in, upper and lower, nice and lubed with assembly lube, and now I'm going to torque them. FSM calls for 33 foot-pounds, so I've got my torque wrench. Let's do it. Connecting rod bearings are done. Check out these connecting rod bearings outside the vehicle. Cleaned up, you can see they got some pretty significant wear on the top side, the ones that are on the connecting rod. And uh, yeah, they're all pretty well worn. Now I have some major wear on this connecting rod bearing. This was from another engine. You can see it's worn right through the, I think it's nickel plating down into the copper i don't know i'm making this up but that's what the colors look like so that's what i'm gonna call it but this stuff when it's worn down can uh cause some little rattling in your engine and if it's bad enough it could cause that knocking sound like the rod knock that we heard in tommy's jeep when we swapped that motor but come over here let's take a look at my factory service manual take a look at the torque specs for the connecting rod nuts and over here you can see it is 33 foot pounds just so you know i didn't make that up connecting rod torque spec so that's it on to the next part we're gonna do the rear main seal now yay finally so the rear main seal is located underneath bearing cap number seven all the way back there in the rear um 
I want to rotate the crank so this counterbalance is up and out of the way. So here we go. Rotate this whole crankshaft again. There we go. That hissing is good compression. That should be good enough. Let's take these off. Got a 21 millimeter. This should do the trick. Yeah, she's on nice and tight. I want you to break that tension. Should come off fairly easily. There we go. Break that seal. Here she comes. Yeah. Here is the bottom half of the rear main seal on the cap. Nice and neat. The harder part is up here. Way up there, this little orange guy, that is your rear main seal. All right, we're gonna have to go poke that out nice and gently with a little punch. I got my long skinny punch and I wanna make sure the diameter of this punch is not bigger than the rear main seal. And I'm gonna go ahead and it's gonna follow the contour of the crankshaft as it comes around. Just wanna start a little bit of it and then hopefully I'll be able to pull the rest out with pliers. You do not want to break or score your crankshaft. There it is. All right. It's gonna put a little bit of brake clean right up in the rear main seal hole. We'll shoot out any debris. Because I want the new rear main seal to go in clean and dry. All right guys, just wanted to illustrate the difference between rear main seals, they changed. So if you have a 99 and older, you're gonna have this type of cap for your rear main seal. It's got these little ears that come out. So you're gonna need part number BS40612 if you're going with Felpro. If you have the 2000 and 2001 XJ, you're gonna need one without the ears. This is part number 40183 if you're gonna use Felpro. So what we're gonna do now, very easy, much easier than the one on the Jeep. We're gonna go ahead and pop this out and clean this up and put the new one in. Note which direction it goes in because there is a little groove in here. This groove always goes towards the engine where the oil is. Also gonna take off this crank bearing Clean out under here. Clean off the bearing itself too. And reassemble. All right, we got our cap all cleaned up. Now we're gonna put these in. These are identical. 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 So you can't really mess them up as long as you put this lip, this groove facing forward. Since this is the end of the engine where the seal is, this is where all your good stuff is, we're gonna make sure that this lip faces the good stuff. So we're just gonna go ahead and press it in. Nice and dry. Excellent. Now, if your engine is outside the vehicle, this is gonna be very easy. You just pop out the old one, and you put in the new one, easy peasy. But uh, it's not gonna be that easy. <laughs> we gotta go crawl into that Jeep. All right, same principles apply when reinstalling this piece. This little lip goes towards the engine, and it's gonna put it on just like how we took it off. We're gonna line it up in this groove, and we're gonna just slide it around. And we're gonna have to tap it in the rest of the way. There she is. She is in. All right. Ready for installation. What we're going to do is put a little bit of RTV, just a little bit, right at the corners. I don't want any RTV touching the crankshaft. Just put it right on the tip. Maybe spread a little bit out on the cap. This will seal the two halves of the seal together. Sealing the seal. I'm going to use a little assembly lube. 
for the crank bearing. And I'm going to put some on the seal itself. Because I'm not going to start this engine for a couple days until we get this Jeep all back together. This is going to get some assembly lube too. And here she comes. All right, now we're just gonna torque it down. I think the final torque is 80 foot-pounds, but you are supposed to step it up from 30 to 50, then to 80. So I'm just gonna gently do one side and the other so it snugs up nice and evenly. Now it's on 50 foot-pounds. Now we know this cap is on nice and even. That's why you step it up. And now we're gonna bring it home to 80 foot-pounds. All right. Here is our new oil pump. This is a Melling. I will leave the link in the description below to where I got this. I do believe it was Amazon. Here we go. Come on, baby. Aha. A nice new oil pump now this is supposed to be a higher flow than stock it is recommended for the Jeep but I don't think it fits right I know there's controversy on the fitment of this baby so luckily again we will reference our XJ motor that I have pulled for Beach Jeep we'll set this right here we'll go grab our oil pan so again we are very lucky we have an engine outside the Jeep and you can see that it is making contact right there on that little baffle. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a groove out of the baffle, see if we can make some room in this. We can see right here where the oil pump made contact with the baffle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this little piece out. So what I did was cut the baffle here with my angle grinder, and then I went and snipped this with my tin snips, uh, right over meow, and then took my hammer and torch, heated this up, and it gave this a little, uh, a little painting right here. Let's go see if it fits. Fuel pump is installed with the gasket, not too tight, uh, just tight enough where it's holding in place. And you can see here that it just doesn't want to line up. The oil pump is just a little too big. Let's go see how much room we need to make. Got some old Play-Doh from the kids that let me borrow it. Under protest, obviously. All right. Go ahead and mush that on. Here we go, this feels nice and snug. Clearance it a little bit more. According to the Play-Doh, I need a little more hammering right in there. Just a couple thousandths of an inch. You know what? We're gonna have a gasket on. That should be just fine. All right, now that we know that the oil pan is clearanced and is going to fit this new oil pump, we're gonna go ahead and put it in. So what I just did off camera was, uh struggled for about an hour trying to fit this pickup into this pump if you remove the pickup from your pump the FSM wants you to reinstall a new pickup because it's supposed to fit airtight so if you're gonna remove this you got to get a new one that being said a new pickup is damn near impossible to uh, install I use a little emery cloth and kind of smooth it out and wiggled it on, hammered it on, used assembly lube, and an hour later, I got it to where I think it should be okay. Uh, don't forget your gasket. Just wanna make sure that lines up where it's supposed to be. And you gotta turn this little notch so it fits in that little drive gear. And I use my big bolt that goes right through the pickup. Make sure the gasket is where it's supposed to be. Oop, don't drop it on your face. All right, it's gonna line up the bolt. Put it in where it's supposed to be, through the pickup, through the gasket. Make sure the gasket is nice and straight and smooth. Hand tighten this. And now the little bolt. That hole lined up real nice through the gasket. Just gently tightening it down, nice and easy. Alternating one side to the other until we get our desired torque spec. And I will disclose that with you in a minute. <laughs> All right, got my torque specs, 204 inch pounds. So here we go. Uh, 
just about right there already. All right. She is torqued. I like it. All right. Oil pan time. Finally. Got my brake clean. Uh, the paper towel. And I'm going to wipe down this whole mating surface right around the rear main seal. Look at that. Got some assembly lube dripping down there from my crank job. All good. I want this area really clean. Now, just to be fair, I already scraped this with a nice razor blade. So it's looking really clean. Don't want any rear main seal leakage. That's so annoying. Or oil pan leak. Oh, all leakage is annoying because it ruins the driveway. Got some red RTV gasket maker. Now, I'm not using this as my seal. I'm going to use this more or less as a glue. You don't have to, but... I'm going to do it anyway, because that's just what I do. Uh, very lightly, I'm just going to touch this surface very, very lightly and evenly. All right, I got myself a Felpro gasket, and it comes with these little clips that you screw on. This holds the gasket in place. This goes in the big holes, which are on the corners. I'm going to get these two thread it in right up here in the back next to the rear main seal and I'm gonna try to work quickly because I don't want these things to get stuck in the RTV how do you like that now here's what you do with those bad boys you take your felt pro gasket right here and you slide it up on these clips one Two. Just want to make sure everything lines up. This isn't the permanent install yet. Three and four. But it's making our lives easier, believe you me. And just a friendly reminder, guys don't forget to reinstall your girdle right after you put on your oil pump. You do not want to forget this thing. Once it's already installed and you got your oil pan on, you're not going to want to take it apart again. And, in case you can't find it, the torque specs for the girdle is 35 foot-pounds. Perfect. Alright, here is my oil pan. And this is going to be a dream to get on because the whole axle is out of the way. You're probably going to still have to battle if you did not remove your axle. So here we go. Around the oil pickup. And then we got to get this around the pump. Get it out of the way of those silly O2 sensor and cats. And then we gotta look for those little tabs that we just uh, screwed in so we could click this baby on. All right. The front ones are on. And oh, the rear ones are already on. Isn't that fantastic? There we go. Now we have the oil pan just dangling free and clear. And you're not busting your butt trying to hold this in place. Uh, Cross-threading your screws is just uh, it's just really nice with this Felpro system. So I like it. Look at that. Hands-free. It's on. Now I can take my time and make sure I get these bolts in right where they go. Time to get my map. So we're gonna just put some bolts in. Don't tighten them down all the way, just get them snug. You wanna bring the pan up next to the gasket. You want it to make contact and then we'll torque and the sequence. All right, guys, torquing procedure time. You're going to want to start with these small ones. They get 85 inch pounds, and you're going to want to go in a circular pattern, alternating left and right, front to back, until you get every one. Uh, again, the bigger bolts, 
they get 132 inch pounds. Well, all right, guys, oil pan is on. Everything in there has been taken care of. This looks great, all sealed up. Um, as you can see, the whole front end is out of this Jeep. Makes this project a whole lot easier. So uh, I'm gonna go work on that front end. Things to take away from this project, let's see. Uh, the oil pump, uh, the most crucial part, I think, uh, I may have glazed over it in the filming, was getting the pickup into the oil pump. Uh, if you remove the pickup from the pump, you're going to want to put a new one on, and that's tough to get to because uh, they are pressed in there so hard. I had the pump and the vise, and uh, I had to just sand off the little bevel in the front, and it took a long time to tap that in, twisting and turning, because you want that airtight. So that was important. Um, what else was important? Don't forget to put your girdle back on, because uh, you might have to drop the pin if you forget that. Those girdle bolts get... 37 foot-pounds of torque um, your rear main seal when you put that in um, they give you a little guide uh, piece of plastic to help you uh, shove that in without stripping um, material off that gasket uh, I didn't use that but um, I'll show you that in this little clip check this out guys look what I just found it's a little plastic shoehorn helps you install your rear main seal into your block without scratching the outer lip of this thing. So what you would do is you would lay this little shoehorn right here and then you would commence your installation of the rear main seal right around the edge. Well, you saw how that went. <laughs> you kind of tap it into place and this shoehorn prevents the, uh, the scratching again. This way uh, your seal will be sealed even tighter. So look for this thing and one other thing i didn't do i didn't use plasti gauge on my connecting rod bearings it's not that critical for this build i don't think because it's not a build but that's the whole point um stock crank nothing was ground down i'm just using bearings that aren't worn so uh, assembly lube them put everything back together take your time with the oil pump uh, and if you want to paint your oil pan and you're using the bigger oil pump Make sure you clearance that first because torching it helps give you clearance and I burned my paint job so <laughs> yeah a lot of little things that turn a little project into a huge project car but uh that's it I think it looks great all right guys we got our new oil pan in with an oil pan gasket we got an oil pump a new oil pickup a rear main seal and new connecting rod bearings everything is in time to start it up so here we go hit it <laughs> wow there we go guys beautiful oil pressure hot idle right dead center perfect this baby is purring like a kitten all right guys that is a wrap for this video i am so happy rec j is running like new a new oil pan gasket, the connecting rod bearings, the oil pump. I'll leave a link to all that stuff in the description below in case you want to get a setup going like this. Um, I couldn't be happier. We got a lot more videos on Rec J coming up. We are going to do a three inch lift. I think I'm going to do a rear disc brake conversion and a whole bunch of other stuff, guys. So stay tuned to the project. Thank you, as always, for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. See you guys on the next project. Peace.